What is happening, YouTube? Cowboy here. Welcome back to Monster Hunter World Iceborne, and this is my Gunlands build. Now, if you saw the Heavy Bowgun video, this set probably looks similar because it's the same set with the decorations changed out, but it works fantastic for gun lancing. Now, this is a normal lancing style build. If you're more interested in wide lancing or slash lancing, I can't really help you, but my good friend Ruri Khan probably can. He's a big, big gun lance guy, so look him on up. Uh, but to take a look at this build in full, we got a lot going on here. Seven attack boost, five artillery, wex at three, offensive guard at three, flinch free, capacity boost, mind's eye, protective polish, razor sharp. Oh my god, it's like a normal Lancer's wet dream. It's amazing. Now before we go into each piece we picked up and why we picked it up, the one thing I want to touch on is the new worm stake blast. Now this is a new mechanic that we gained access to in Iceborne. Triangle and circle while you have slinger ammo, and you basically upgrade your worm stake. Now, there's a couple ways to go about this. The first, of course, just going through your regular combo, and then after your blast, you go for your worm stake, but instead, it'll leave this little thing on the target. Now, you can also just manually do this without going through the full combo, just to show that real fast. Let's get our, our reload. But what you're going to do is you'll load the worm stake blast, you get a guard point while you're loading it, and then hit the same button to just plant it. So it's just a faster way to get to that. And what's great about this thing is every time you do damage with shells, it's going to do damage. So essentially, you put this on the monster to create your own target zone, your own weak point, and then you just go ham as you normally would, doing a ton of damage to it works through all kinds of stuff. We can use Wyvern's Fire on it to get some fat damage. Look at this. 700 damage between that and our Wyvern's Fire going off. So that is the new mechanic we have access to with Gunlance. It's pretty fun, especially if you have multiple people running Gunlance, because uh, theirs will also work off of your explosions, which will allow you to do just some goofy amounts of damage. But anyway, let's jump on into the gear, talk about what we picked up and why. Now, no surprise here, the king of the crop is going to be the Queen's Panoply. Now, this is the upgrade of the Pink Rathian Gun Lance. You gain access to this after you've unlocked Golden Rathian. And this thing is monstrous. We have a fat amount of white sharpness, 715 attack on it. It comes with a base of 15. Well, let's go to the, the sheet. So, 667 attack, base 15 affinity, 450 poison, normal level 6, and a level 1 deco slot. This is without question going to be what you want for normal lancing. The reason for this is not only do we have the affinity on there, we have the hefty white sharpness, that poison is more than going to make up for the difference that you would get from going to something that offers purple. Now, until you gain access to this, you could run the Vulcana Gun Lance. The Vulcana Gun Lance is also a normal level six. You can get purple sharpness on it if you want to work in handicraft. But the thing is, Gun Lance doesn't gain any shelling bonus for sharpness going past green. Whether you're blue or white or purple, your shells are a fixed amount of damage, and that's because, or that's why purple sharpness isn't going to be as important to us when running a gun lance, and ultimately what makes the Queen's Panoply such an amazingly strong choice. Now moving into our necklace, similar to before, we're going to want razor sharp here. If you've ever played normal lancing, you know that normal gun lance eats through sharpness. And therefore, having Razor Sharp is going to greatly, greatly decrease the amount of sharpness that you're burning through and overall just give you a lot more uptime. Uh, similar to before, we're running three pieces Zora. We're going to be going with the headgear and the spine for two pieces of artillery, the claws to fill out our three piece set bonus, Rex Roar Male Beta for the attack, the Wex, and the Decos, and then of course Garuga Greaves for the wonderful decoration slots. Now, where this build really comes together is with the decorations. We can pick up three guardian attack jewels and that's going to give us access to offensive guard three and between those and two regular attack decos we also get our attack up to seven you're going to want to drop two tenderizers up in your zora head to give you wex up at three you're, and then lastly you're going to want to slot on in a magazine for your capacity boost increasing the amount of files you have you're going to want mind's eye just to ensure that you never bounce while trying to go through that normal slam and jam combo and then lastly protective polish because as we all know, with a weapon that eats through sharpness, Protective Polish is going to help you immensely. 
Now, one thing that is important to mention, I think, is you can use Item Prolonger to take Protective Polish from a 60 second duration to a 90 second duration. And while this is a possibility for the build, ultimately I felt that just having Protective Polish on its own combined with Razor Sharp gives you more than enough uptime that you shouldn't have to sharpen until the monster transitions to a new area. So all in all, this comes together giving you a lot of damage between the attack boost up at seven, the bonus damage we have on artillery. And one of the things that's important to mention with artillery five is our Wyvern's fire is cooled down by 70%. You know, typically we only see Wyvern's fire getting used either as a wake up attack or right at the start of the fight. And you can actually work it in quite a bit with artillery five. Pretty much anytime you knock the monster down, you can get a Wyvern's fire off in the face. So just something to keep in mind as you play. So either way, let's jump on into a hunt, show you what this thing is capable of. Y'all are about to see some absolutely silly numbers. So to show off the gun lance, we're going after a coral puke puke. This thing is super irritating, and honestly, I just find it satisfying to put the worm steak blast in its face. So here we go. It's gonna be so satisfying. Load that guy up. Gonna put it in your face, Pook. There we go. Let's pick this up. We'll pick this up. There we go. Get our sharpen real fast while he's incapacitated. Oh, you shit. You know what? I don't even need it.
and it's dead. Just hit green sharpness. Didn't even have protective polish on either. Keep that in mind. We could have had a whole uh, whole minute of that fight where we weren't even losing sharpness. So yeah, basically, long story short, is Gunlance is just capable of doing silly amounts of damage now. I mean, full burst has always been rather silly, but I mean, when you add in the the new Wormstake blast mechanic, it's just extra lulls. That's what you get spraying water at me. Forceful baths. No one wants forceful baths, Pookie. Hell out of here with that. So anyway, uh, that is going to wrap up our series on build guides. Now, obviously, I haven't covered Hunting Horn. Um, to be frank with y'all, I'm still debating if I want to. I just, you know, I almost never play Hunting Horn. And speaking frankly, I just think there's people better suited at showcasing the weapon than I am because I have very, very little understanding of it. Um, as for build guides in the future, I do have a couple other builds that are in the works. I have uh, a, a impact style charge blade build, which coincidentally is pretty close to what I'm running with this build, uh, with just a couple of pieces swapped out. I have a exhaustion based build for a switch axe that I'm working on. So there are a couple things in the works that I will likely showcase in the coming weeks. But for now, at least in terms of, of uh, the momentum that I've been putting these videos out with, that will certainly decrease a little bit. So as always, I wanted to thank you all for your support on these build videos. It's all the uh, the comments and the engagement and all that stuff that, that makes me want to create these for you guys. So thanks for coming on by. Hope you liked it. And I will catch you next time with a new build video.